Hey guys, what's going on? It's Alan here. We're bringing you something new. So today we're going to look at my render settings. So we're going to be using Sony Vegas 12 for this. And I'm not going to claim that these are the best settings that you can possibly get, but they're very good and they'll actually look so, so, so good on YouTube. Now, um, if you want to check that out, uh, look at my later videos after this video. Um, and you'll see a lot of the videos uh, use these red render settings and I'll tag a video at the end of this video uh, using this render settings, these render settings to show you how good they actually are. So first thing you want to do is actually bring in a video. So we'll go and uh, bring this Assassin's Creed one in and now it's going to ask you, do you want to set your project video settings to match this media? So you can just click yes if you want. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but um, there we go. So first thing you want to do is click Properties, uh, Disable Resample and Reduce Interlace Flicker uh, because that will make your video look a lot better. So we'll just bring this video down a little bit uh, in size. Let's see, we'll go to here. Get rid of this. Bring this over here. There we go. Now, um, you might wonder why I have three things here, but I use DxTory to record and it records my voice on a separate track than it does to the game audio as you can see like hang on there we go that wasn't so bad so as you can see it records my voice as well as the game audio so if i wanted to i can make edits or just delete that by pressing u and then delete separates the tracks. So now we just have the game audio. Oh, oops. So now that we have that, we the first thing you want to do after you've disabled resample is go into the properties, okay? Now, these are my custom properties that I use. So if you want to see them, uh, pause the video and that, except actually, I don't have this at um, 30 frames here. I, I always bring this down to um, 2970. It doesn't really ma matter, it's just the preference I use. Um, Though if, you, if you're recording a video at like 50 frames per second or 60, put this up to that. You want to render at the same uh, same frame rate that you recorded at. But as I only record at 30 frames per second, this does me fine. So um, there's that. And you don't really need to record render at 60 frames per second unless you're adding slow motion into your video. Which of course I have no intention of doing because this video wasn't recorded at 60 frames per second. So now, so for pixel format, you it's going to usually be at default at 8 bit, but I'll put it at 32 bit floating point, which will give you the best quality. Composing gamma, you want it at 1. Now, in view transform, um, on default, it comes in at this, so we'll show you. So, this is what it looks like when you first bring a file into Sony Vegas 12. And for ages, I couldn't figure out what that, why it was so colorful, right? And it, it just looked wrong. But all you have to do is you go into your properties and you come down to view transform and you turn this off, hit apply. And as you can see, it goes back to normal. So just make sure that's off. View transform is off in Sony Vegas 12. Now, full resolution quality you want obviously at best. Uh, motion blur, this actually doesn't really matter. Box pyramid, Gaussian, I, I wouldn't go for these three, but either of these three is fine. I prefer box, but like I said, it doesn't matter. Default for this is blend fields. Just put it on none and do not allow source media to better match project render settings. Just unclick that. So now that's your properties, your video properties. Once you uh, set these and apply them, they'll be uh, a lot better quality video. So when you go to audio, then um, you change this from 16 to 24, this from good to best. And you can change this uh, if you want. It, I think it starts at 44,000 or 48,000. But uh, I always put this to 192,000 just because it's, it is the best. And uh, once that's done, you go back to video, click start all projects with these settings, hit apply and OK. And your video will look great. Now, now that that's done, you do some editing if you want. For example, what I usually do is I go to video effects. I go into color corrector, which is this one here. Go to default, bring this down because the video looks a bit whitewashed already. But when you come in here and you go to saturation and go from 1000 to 1100 it adds a nice bit of color there so it looks better but that only adds to you and a little bit around here what you want then to do is go into the secondary bring this down here as well and you go from 1100 to 1000 or 1000 
you go from 1000 to 1050 and as you can see it just lightens it up a little bit not too much but it, it gives a nice bit of color and it looks very colorful on this computer but when you render it out and uh, put it up on YouTube it looks amazing so there you go now um, that's what I do and then I add a text file uh, or a text comment here with my name just so it's people will know it's from me if I post it on uh, another channel that I work with and uh, then I'm going to go to render um, the video so we'll go to the render settings now which I guess is what most of you have come to see so uh, these are my two pre-concept ones I made this actually earlier for an another video that I didn't use but that's not no matter so uh, when you when you go to um, render you have all these templates that you can use all the different file types now a lot of people like to use this one WMV which gives good quality and good compression but I actually like to use main concept uh, mp4 when I'm using um, Sony Vegas 12 which I'll get into in a second but among other reasons the mp4 actually gives you the best quality possible so much better than the WMV uh, like Sony Vegas 11 gave you better quality in WMV than mp4 but in Sony Vegas 12 they've changed it so this is so much better so now what you want to do when you open up Sony Vegas uh, or the mp4 the main concept is come down here and find the internet HD 1080p because my videos are native 1080p when I upload them I use or enter them into the, uh, Sony Vegas I use the, this template the 1080p one but if your videos are 720p you just use this one so here we go we'll go into customize template and um, actually before we do this I want to tell you um, Another reason why I use Sony Vegas 12 is it allows you to use your GPU accelerate, acceleration to help your GPU uh, render out the video. Now, um, Sony Vegas 11 did this too, but more GPUs are supported in this one. So to do that, all you have to do is to go into Options, you go into Preferences, you go to Video, and you come to here GPU Acceleration. So usually it's off. I have it on advanced micro devices, but my GPU is a uh, AMD HD7950, so it'll be listed like that. Sometimes your actual the name of your GPU is listed there, but that will do anyway. Then you can click apply and OK, and you're ready to go. So then when you go to render, now we go back into our new settings. So we go into our HD 1080p, which is here. Go into customize template. So the first thing you want to do is make sure this is clicked, include video. Then we have our HD 1080, 1920 by 1080. Do not allow source to adjust frames. Keep this on main. You can put it on high if you want, but I know there's no difference between high and main. So frame rate, you match this to what you put in the project settings. I put it at 29.970, so I put the same here. Uh, do not allow it to adjust frame rate. And make sure this is non-progressive scan. Okay, so pixel ratio you want it at one. Uh, I know it says this for HD uh, in the in the project settings, but you want it at one. Trust me. A number of reference frames is two. Do not use the deblocking filter either. Um, so it comes down to bit rate, and this is probably one of the most important things for getting the high quality, the highest quality for your video. So you can use variable bit rate and uh, change that around, or you can use constant. But um, variable bitrate actually gives you a lot higher um, file size than constant bitrate because it's always jumping around and the quality isn't much better or even better at all. I use constant bitrate and a lot of people do as well. So I'm going to say this bluntly. If you, if you want the best quality, do not go below 14 million bits per second. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of pixelation in your videos uh, when it gets dark or when something fast happens. So you want to stick to 14 million or if you want the very best, go to 20 million. Videos look incredible in 20 million bits per second and that's what I use. But uh, 14 million will give you a nice file size and still very, very decent quality. So um, I'm going to render this in 20 million, but you can use 14 million if you want. But also if you're, if you're using like a HD PVR or something like that, that limits the max frame rate you, or bit rate you can get to 14 million. So do not go over that if you're using something like that because that just upscales it and it looks really bad. So if you're using like a capture card that ha has a max uh, bitrate setting, use that max bitrate setting and you're good to go. 
But if you're using like playing PC gameplay and you're using like DX Tori or Fraps or something, that doesn't limit the bit rate. So you literally can choose any of these. So I wouldn't go above 50 because 50 will give you a huge, huge file size. I mean, rendering a 25 minute video at 20 bits per second will give you 20 million bits per second will give you um, a file size of 3.5 gigabits, uh, which is quite massive, but I have pretty de decent internet. So that doesn't really matter to me. But uh, if, if you don't want a huge file size, don't go below 14 million bits per second. I know I've been going on this for a long, uh, a while, but it's very important to nail this out. So either one of these will give you the best quality you can get. And I'm going for 20. Now, number of, I'm not sure what exactly this means, but literally I just put this up to 20, but um, if I put up the full 32, for some reason, Sony Vegas crashes after about 50 or 60% of the way through. So 20 gets it done grand, but I, I haven't really noticed a difference in quality if I put that down to one or keep it up at 20, so it doesn't really matter. So in code mode, this allows you to use your GPU if you have it available or not. So uh, OpenCL is for the AMD style, CUDA is for uh, NVIDIA. So I use OpenCL and uh, we quickly go to audio. That's perfectly set for me, 48,000 and 190,000, 92,000. So I leave it at that system. So this is where you can check if it's available. So it says OpenCL is available for me, so that's great. And then we go to project, project settings at best. So why would you use GPU uh, um, acceleration? It's because it really accelerates your video. Now, um, my video or my system only has eight gigs of RAM, so the editing isn't as fast as it would be if I had 16 gigs. But even so, if I was rendering a 20 minute video without the GPU acceleration, it would take me about two, uh, between two hours and two and a half hours. But with the GPU acceleration, it takes about one hour, maybe even 45 minutes to an hour. So it's a big difference. And if I upgrade to RAM, it'll take even shorter, I believe. So uh, there you go. It's something I'd recommend if you have the GPU that is capable of that. But these are the best possible settings that I, well, in my opinion, these are the best settings and they'll look absolutely amazing on YouTube. So um, we'll just uh, click that there. Um, and we'll click our favorites to show them. So these are my three setups. This is the one I use, and this is the one I just created. So we'll quickly just click render here uh, to show what it's gonna look like. And um, I'll tag a video, I'll tag this video at the end of this video here to show you what the quality is like and how good it looks. And I guess we'll leave it at that. So thanks guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you later. Yeah.